Is the light on all right, Graham? Or are you leaving any other lights anywhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all right, it's all Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming this evening. It's very nice to see you. This is actually the first time we've been back here since October. We had events here at uh, the Snailings Leave Office in September, Welcome to Helsingborg, and October, Ways Into Work. So because of you know what, uh, we haven't been able to do so much physically for a little while. So it's, it's really nice to see you again and to have some guest speakers and to have an audience. Tonight's event, as you know already, is all about H22, the City Expo that's happening this year. And we know that this is going to be a very big event in Helsingborg. It's very exciting to see. Uh, but of course, a lot of people are saying to me, well, what's it really all about? And is it just for business? And how is it going to affect me, the ordinary person? So we wanted to invite some people to come and talk to us this evening and let us know what it's all about. So we're very happy to have Caroline, uh, Mikhail and also Jonas, who will be discussing different aspects of H22 with us. Uh, if you are new to HIC, if you don't know anything about us, Helsingborg International Connections, we're an organisation that's been running since 2014. And we are here to help support international newcomers. We're here to run English events, to run a network, um, to make it easier for people to settle in to, uh, to Helsingborg when they arrive here. And I'll just run through and give you a little bit of information about it quickly before we have our first speaker. So, as I mentioned, uh, we, we are an organisation, we're a completely independent organisation, but we're also given a grant by the municipality every year. Uh, in return for that, we run, or well, our agreement is to run 12 events, and we, we actually run quite a lot of different types of events. This is one of what I call our more formal ones, but you'll also see us with pub nights or coffee mornings or walks or all kinds of different things. Um, we are... One of the things, one of the reasons that I think it's it's good to have, well, there are lots of reasons that it's good to have and it's something like, like HIC in a community. But I know that for the business side of things here, it definitely helps because it's making Helsingborg more attractive to international companies. And it's giving international talent uh, a community, a forum, a way of finding out information when they arrive here. So we know that it helps people settle when they come here, it helps people feel more at home, and it helps people feel more engaged, because by guest speakers like we have tonight, you have an immediate way in to finding out what's going on. Um, I've mentioned a couple of the things that we do. Our, our main activities are events, and networking. We also run drop-in sessions once a month where people can come and ask questions about living in Sweden, living in Helsingborg. Uh, we have a monthly newsletter, so please sign up for that if you'd like to, otherwise you'll find it on the home page of our website. Uh, we are very keen to help put people in touch with each other. We have a bit of an obsessive need to do that. So if you come along to a drop-in session and say that you're interested in, I don't know, perhaps a particular sport or you're thinking about setting up a company, then we often know someone that we can put you in touch with. So we love to do that and that'll help, help you get started, help make life a lot easier. Uh, and when we can, we also love to showcase international talents. So if you're someone who's looking for work at the moment and would like us to put some information about you on our social media channels, please let us know. Send us a picture and a nice little blurb and we'll put something out there for you. Last year we were involved in a podcast project which was a vision fund project and we've put together 14 episodes about life in Helsingborg, all sorts of different aspects. So you can still find that on Spotify, Google Podcasts, um, Podcast Index, or just Google Hick Helsingborg Podcast and you'll find it. Um, it's a lot of fun to do and uh, it, I think it's well worth listening to. You can find us all over social media, so uh, there's no excuse. You can look us up very easily, you can find us. And 
anytime you want to get in touch, just let us know. I've just whistled through really the, the outline of what HIC does, just a very quick uh, overview because I don't want to spend too much time tonight because we've got a lot more exciting information to come. But uh, with that, I'm going to hand over to Caroline, who's a, a partner project manager at H22. But she's going to tell us exactly what she does and, uh, and give us some more information. Thanks for having me and inviting me. Thank you for being here. <laughs> nice to see you all. Yeah. Uh, yes, my name is Caroline, and I'm obviously working with H22. Uh, we are many, many of us are working with H22 at the moment, actually. When I started working with H22 for three years ago, then we were about four or five people. Now we are almost 40 people working with H22 every day. But, but since the initiative is a city-wide initiative, so all the ones who are working in the city are working with H22 in one way or another. I've just remembered that you've got the, uh, that I've got the microphone ah, still. I see. Sorry about that, Caroline. Would you like to just check yes. if things are right yes. with your computer as well? Thank you. Let's see here where I can have this. Without. Let's see if we can get this to work. Yeah, it's working. Something is happening. It looks a bit, a bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um, yeah, so when I started, we were not that many people, but now it's getting closer. We have, I think someone said today, we have 14 weeks left. I'm looking at you. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> and that is not that much time. Uh, it's a huge event that we have in front of us at the moment and we all look forward to that and as you understand we were very glad last week when the restrictions was over um, okay so this is great uh, and my part in h22 is that i'm working with all the partners uh, all the companies that that does initiatives together with us innovation initiatives or it could also be program initiatives that will be a part of the expo uh, as well and you said that I'm going to tell you all about the City Expo and, and this is actually a challenge. I would say I, I've worked with the H22 and the City Expo for many years. I don't know everything <laughs> because it, it, it is that, that big. But I will try to give you a picture of what we have uh, in front of us anyway. And H22 actually uh, consists of two parts. One is the innovation journey that, is, that the city is on. Uh, and the other part is the City Expo that we have in front of us. Um, and the H22 as a platform, uh, we would say that it's uh, the biggest, the Sweden's biggest uh, platform for urban sustainability in 2022. And the event, the City Expo, will for sure be the biggest event in Skåne for over 20 years, probably. That's what we're, we're heading for, at least. So this decision to, to do uh, H22 was made in 2019 uh, and the, the city of Helsingborg made a bold decision to invest 250 million Swedish krona in the initiative and half of those money is going out to uh, the city, uh, the departments in the, the city to use for innovation initiatives to, to try and test and do things in new ways that we haven't done before. And the other part is used for the City Expo. That is how we invest those, those money. So the Expo will be for 35 days, uh, starting on the 30th of May uh, and ending on, ending on uh, the 3rd of July. Uh, so that's, that's what we have in, in front of us. It is an international event uh, where um, the companies will showcase what they have done. You can test, you can co-create smart solutions that in many different ways improve the smart life in cities, you could say. Take the next, next picture. And, and actually Helsingborg has a, a proud tradition of doing expos in the past. The first one we did already in 1955. 
Uh, at that time, uh, we had a focus on design, you could say. Uh, and many say that um, that event really put Scandinavian design on the map from that, that time. And then we did another expo in 1999 called H99. And that was this traditional housing expo, you could say. And then we have this H22. Now we're taking it to the next level, you could say. It's absolutely one part of it is a housing, traditional housing exhibition. Uh, it could be about the design, but it's much more. It's about the people that lives in the city and cre creating a quality of life. Um. So what about the program? What is it? What can we expect from it? And as I said, you could, you could say that, um, is it a smart city industry festival? Is it a housing exhibition? What, what is it? And actually it's, it's a mix of all that. You could say that it's, it's everything. So with this picture, I just want to show you that this, this core content that I've been working on for like three years now, and also the city of Helsingborg, that's for the industry people, you could say. But then of course we have other layers for the City Expo. We have this layer of experience, the core content, which is about developing uh, smart cities for the future. We need to add layers for, uh, of experience uh, to make it um, relevant for a broader audience, you could say. And then we have, of course, events and conferences and the last layer of food and drinks and culture. Uh, that's, that's for everyone. And when we started this journey uh, to kind of create that core content, um, we know, we knew that to develop the smart cities for the future, we can't do that on our own because it's absolutely the industry and the companies that we need to do this journey together with. So we kind of started with um, getting good uh, cooperations with companies. So these are all the partners that in some way are connected to H22 and all of them have their own program initiatives um, that will be a part of the expo next summer. And I will give you a couple of examples, but what they all do can be found on in the program at the website as well, of course. Uh, next uh, slide is a movie that will kind of give you a picture of what H22 will be. Hope the sound works. Cities, what a wonderful place to live in. We are amazed by them. We are amazed by the human experience, how we dare, test, and how we do. When we share our experience, true change can happen. More and more people live in cities, creating challenges both for the climate and quality of life. This is where the battle for our common future must be won. Let me take you to Helsingborg, a city in Sweden. Quite small in size, but big in ambition. Helsingborg is one of the most innovative cities in Europe, with a vision that is clear and focused, and an investment of a kind that Sweden has never before. It's called H22. A decision to open up the whole city for the world. Open up for new experiences, new ideas, new tastes, and exciting new horizons. In the summer of 2022, Helsingborg will be the place where change takes flight. A once in a lifetime experience for anyone seeking a brighter future, not just for select few but for the many, for the dreamers, the innovators, and why not the crazy ones. An amazing living lab where we together look beyond boundaries to a sustainable future we can call our own. Do you want to be part of creating a true change in the world, a true change in you? Get ready to be amazed at H22 City Expo.
Had any of you seen the movie before? Or was it the first time? You have? Yeah. Yeah. It gives you a feeling of what to expect, I think. Oh, let's see here if I can get the next one. Here. So uh, let's jump, jump into the City Expo. Um, the Expo will be uh, have four main areas uh, spread uh, around the city. It's Drottninghög, City, Oceanhamnen and Slottshagen. So almost all initiatives will be focused on to those areas. Um, and here you will find a mix of um, uh, you can walk around, of course, to all the initiatives. It will be mixed with pavilions. You can enter in a house. There might be, you can visit an apartment or a house. You can listen to seminars and, and all that will, will be mixed over those uh, four areas, you could say. So pavilions, exhibitions, active, uh, hackathons, conference, workshops, site visits, all that will be spread over those four areas. And the four areas will also have uh, different themes. So that is we, how we um, decide where the different initiatives will be, because they will be focused on, on those four different themes. Uh, Drottninghög is about co-creation. Uh, I don't know if you know the area Drottninghög. Have you ever been there before? Maybe some of you have. And this, this is a place that has been developed together with the citizens for over 15 years already. And they are kind of in the middle of that transformation journey. So uh, Drottninghög is about co-creation and, and will be the place for that kind of initiatives too. And then we have the Ocean Harbor. That is a brand, brand new area. Um, some has already moved in, but there are many more to come. And, and this is about circularity. And this is where we kind of showcase if you build a brand new area in the city, how would you do that? It's about, could be about tech and, and that stuff. And then you have the city center. Then we call that open up for the world because that's where um, we have many conference, for example, exhibition areas, and that's, that's where the people will meet, kind of the main entrance to the city expo. And then we have Slottshagen, who had the theme quality of life, and that's, that's what it, that place is all about. Uh, what is quality of life for pe people who live in a city? How can we create quality of life in different, different kind of ways? And all those uh, main areas will have info points that will help the visitors to, to find out where to go and what happened today when I'm here or for the next week. And this is a picture of the info point in the city center, which is, uh, I, I, I don't know if you see that it's sh shaped as an age. So, so this will be um, uh, not, it will be placed at this place during the city expo, but afterwards it, it will be moved to another place. But we have from age 55, we have the age 55 pavilion. I don't know if you've seen that out on Parapeten. That's a house that, we have from that expo. So this will be the masterpiece from, from this expo, you could say, something to remember and look, look back to. Now I will give you a couple of examples of, of program initiatives that you could kind of explore at the City Expo. And Space to Innovate is, is one of them. Uh, this will be placed at the Sundstorget in the middle of here in the city center. And as I told you from the beginning, um, age 22 is one part is the innovation journey that the city is on and the other part is the expo. And this exhibition will uh, tell the story about the innovation journey that the city is on. This is an exhibition where you can find many different initiatives and tests that the city of Helsingborg has done through those three years uh, at the moment. So this will be open for 35 days and, of course, open for everyone to visit. And as I said, we, we have the theme um, open up for the world in the city. And, and of course, we have a lot of meetings and congresses during this period. Uh, and most of them are at the CU uh, here, uh, the neighbor. And we've counted that we have 
almost 70 different meetings, large and small meetings, during a period of four weeks uh, up to midsummer uh, around. And so it gathers around 15,000 people just going to those meetings. Uh, and there will for sure be something that may be interesting for you. Everything can be found in the program. Uh, I would, if I would highlight some of them, I would say that Urban Future Global Conference is one, one um, format that is really interesting. They, they um, gathers, they say, city changers from all over the world. Uh, last time when they had the conference in Oslo in 2019, now we had Corona, so they haven't had it for two years. But at that time, they were almost 3,000 people at that conference. So they will be here for three days for the, during the first week. So there are many uh, interesting uh, conferences to be a part of. And then we have those, uh, we call them uh, H22 Talks. That is a kind of open um, uh, seminars that everyone can be a part of. Um, we have one stage here in the city center at Dunkers, and then we have the other one in Oceanhamnen at Rekolab. I don't know if you know that, but it's uh, out in Oceanhamnen. And then we have one in Drottinghög. And those stages will be filled with program every day during 35 days, uh, where we share our innovation journey and different projects, and, and also the partners to H22 can share their journey and their projects and what we've done together, for example. So we're kind of sitting with that puzzle at the moment. I think you can imagine 35 days with kind of five slots every day at every stage. Um, so um, if you have time to spare, you could just enjoy this for 35 days, I would say. And then, of course, there will be a lot of guided tours. We will have guided tours in the main areas every day. Uh, and then there are guided tours if you have any special interest. Yeah, I'm, it could be special interest in, could be circularity, it could be creating safe uh, environment, or it could be, I think you understand uh, how it works. So different guided tours in the areas. And of course, our partners do have guided tours as well. Uh, also open for everyone to, to be a part of. And then uh, I would just wanted to give you some examples of uh, some initiatives is, is done by partners, for example. I don't know if you saw, we had a press release last week about uh, something called Havoteket that will be built in Ocean uh, Harbor. And this is um, an initiative that our partner Hemsa is kind of ahead of, but it's a cooperation of many partners, uh, actually. And this will be the place um, where mostly families, I would say, and children can learn about the ocean or the life beneath the, what do you say, ytan, the surface. Um, so where they can touch fishes and, and learn about how uh, how to develop and an kind of um, a healthy sea. Uh, and as we are a city close to the sea, this is very important for, for us, of course. So Havoteket will be open also for 35 days uh, for everyone to, to be a part of. And then, of course, there are many initiatives uh, which is around uh, the future of living. There will be many apartments and houses and that kind of um, initiatives to visit. Um, and I will give you a couple of examples. One partner is Bokluk and they will build a brand new uh, housing concept for elderly people, um, especially adapted to those who have, um, uh, I, I don't know the English, is it dementia? When you, yeah, yeah, dementia, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's a brand new concept um, built for the very first time. Uh, and that is, is a concept that they have developed together with, with Sylvia Hemmet. Uh, that's our queen who's a part of that. Uh, and that will also be something that, that you could visit and, and learn about. And this is very important uh, right now, actually, because, because um, 
we're, we're getting all of us is getting older so the population will be older and then we need homes of course for those uh, so this is very um, important right now another initiative is being built at this moment actually at Gåsebäck it's called Rehouse I don't know if you've seen that if you're going south you see um, that something is is rising there and this is actually movable homes so that's a brand new thing of uh, of uh, building houses and they are actually allowed at the moment to have those ho houses there for 10 years it could be extended with another five years, so it could be for 15 years. And after that, they can move them. If it's, because um, at Gåsebeck, we don't have apartments at the moment. So this is a new step for us to do. And after 15 years, we could say that, okay, it didn't work out to have uh, apartments at Gåsebeck. Then they actually can move them. So I just wanted to share this picture. Uh, this is when uh, the blocks for the housing came to the harbour for, this was for one month ago, two, one or two months ago. And then the house was up in just a couple of weeks. So uh, that's quite, quite cool. A new way of, of building houses and, and this three house can be visited and go inside and see too. And of course, food is a very important stuff when you visit an event. Uh, that's the, the last layer, as I showed you, with food and drinks and, and all that. Uh, and it's been important for us to, to have served good food in a, in a special way at the City Expo. So we, we have a cooperation. This is a famous chef in the south of Sweden. His name is Daniel Berlin, and he has helped us to create a concept for food uh, and he will actually run an arena for food during those 35 days uh, here uh, nearby here so there he will arrange different kind of uh, food events every day it could be um, tasting some drinks or seminars about food in space or it could be yeah many different kinds of food food events during the days and this can of course all be found in the program uh, soon and during one weekend for example we would have the Swedish street food award so um, this will be really fun this will be at Hamtorget in the middle of, uh, of the expo so this is um, a good weekend to try it try out the good food street food at least uh, this is a picture from one of IKEA's initiatives that they do uh, at the City Expo. They are actually doing three different uh, very interesting initiatives. This is the one that they do in Drottninghög. And this is a place for them to showcase that, that the place for home is, is extending. It's not, it's not just home, the home is extending outside home. So this where, will be the place where it will be a market, you can um, um, go and fix clothes if they're, yeah, it will serve different kind of services for the ones who, who lives uh, at Rottninghög and also others too, of course. Um, so this is a, a, a new way for them to work. It's not obvious that it's IKEA, so actually they're trying out a new concept here to see if this is something that they could bring to other cities maybe. So that's interesting. And they also have an initiative in Fredrikstadskogen that's behind uh, Helsingborg Arena. I don't know if you do that, know that. And that is called Kamp Tillsammans. And then they have a, their third initiative in the Ocean Harbor, which is in um, uh, Magasin för 105. And there they will more showcase the future of, the future of home or future living. So please see at the, our website to, to read more about their different, different initiatives. And then of course we have a lot of uh, things for children. This initiative is not for the children actually, that's for the, for, uh, the parents maybe to see. This is an exhibition that will be in Slottshagen outside. The pictures is from inside, but this will be adapted for having outside instead 
to show out how we've worked with play in cities and developing cities over years. So this will be at Slottshagen. But those superheroes is, is for the children. So every main area will have their own superhero. Uh, we'll have them also in a human size uh, that could kind of go and speak to the children. And, and, uh, and they also have um, the reason for us having those superheroes is also to, um, um, to explain for the children how um, we need to kind of work with uh, smart and sustainable cities. How did they have different kind of superpowers and, and all that stuff. So it's a kind of educating initiative, you could say also, but still fun for the children. Also for adults. Yeah, <laughs> also for that. It could be. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And you can also meet a robot at age 22. We need to have robots at age 22, of course. Um, and in, um, in the main info point, the pavilion that I showed you, there we will have this Mr. Q that you could ask questions about the City Expo and where to go and where can I find this? I need to have something to drink. And then Mr. Q can, can help the visitors to, to go out and find, find what you're looking for. Um, I don't know if you know Hedge uh, down in Ocean Harbor. Um, they is doing a, a great initiative, which is called Hex uh, 22. And that is actually a hackathon for 22 days uh, at the moment. So this is actually also an open event for everyone to, to be able to be, be a part of different hackathons and, and, and be active and take part in, in, uh, in that. So please follow follow that too. I don't think it, it might be the last thing. And this is an, uh, one initiative will also be in the Ocean Harbor. That's one of our partners, PIAB, that is, um, and they are building a traffic school for children. So they could uh, go by bike or kick bike or, or whatever, go around in the traffic school to, to have their driving license in sustainability as they describe it. So now you, you've got some examples of what to uh, explore during those 35 days, but for sure we have the website. Uh, at the moment there is almost 180 program initiatives and there will be more along the way. So follow us at social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, and of course the website to, to be up, updated about what's happening. Thank you. you can have questions. Don't you have any questions? Yeah. Sure. Um, two questions. Yeah. What about music? Yes, that's a good question. In Slottshagen, I, I showed you Slottshagen, there is a stage called Grytan, and that stage will, will be filled with music, but it could be like yoga in the morning and could be some seminars, but absolutely music almost every, every evening. And also we have this festival every, every year in Helsingborg called HOEX. I don't know if mm -hmm. you know that. Yeah, they will have their yearly event uh, during age 22 also. And that is uh, the last weekend, uh, first to second, if you're especially interested in music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And are the sessions in two partnership closed or can? No, it's not closed. No, it, it can be more partners still. But of course, 14 weeks, the uh, time is moving fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Thank you, Martin. Yeah? Uh, thank you for the presentation, Group Support. Uh, I just wanted to know, I'm, I, I know it's too early, probably early, but what is the interest or, uh, that, that you're getting from other parts of Sweden, like uh, in three cities like Gothenburg or mm -hmm. Malmo or Stockholm for that matter, where you know innovation plays a very important role in everybody's life. Or for that yeah. matter, we are opening the doors to a lot of international, uh, as in get, trying to get, uh, trying to get Helsinki getting international exposure. So, have yeah. you received any response from the other cities in Europe or outside Europe? Or if it's too early, maybe just give a glimpse of what it is. Yes, yes, we have. Uh, there are different formats, and one of these that I didn't t tell you about is called Urban Brilliance. 
So during the first week at Hamtorget, we will have an arena for uh, cities from the world, actually mostly Europe. So we've invited uh, 10 different cities that will be um, sharing how they work with their innovation work. So that is kind of a platform for other cities to be in. And, and this arena will also be open for everyone to, to be a part of. Um, and also, I told you about the Urban Future Global Conference. That is for sure an arena for, for cities or people working in cities or with cities. And we already know that there are delegations from, I don't know ex the exact numbers, but from at least 20 different cities uh, attending that conference. And of course, uh, our mayor is inviting his <laughs> partners or, or uh, mayors from uh, around mostly Europe to come here. Uh, and we have many delegations from uh, Swedish cities that will visit, of course. They are curious about to see, okay, what have they done with all this money? <laughs> <laughs> Has it done any difference or uh, no, I'm, I'm um, yeah, but that's how it is. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, well, thanks. Thank you, Caroline. Um, thank you very much for that. that. That's a really good start because there is so much, isn't there, to learn about H22. And I know every time I look at the website to try and find out something and see what's going on, you know, I think, gosh, I need to come back. <laughs> when I've got more time, but, but there is lots there. So, and the question about partnerships as well, you can find out how to be a partner with H22, uh, which actually I still need to do. So that's something I'm gonna get on with. Um, and also, um, just from what you were saying then about the question about um, other cities and other countries being interested, it's been, I, I've been to, is it just one or two H22 summits we've had now? I can't quite remember. So two, yeah, one was digital and one was in person, and it's the in-person one I was thinking about, where they had, um, had people from Amsterdam, they had people from uh, from MIT, from all kinds of different cities and countries talking about um, what they're doing and how they're all linking up with H22. So it, it's very interesting. It, it is, you know, we, as it says at the beginning, it's quite a small city, yes, but I think is. the ambition is high and yeah. uh, there is a lot going on here. So it's it's worth, I think, spending some time to uh, to look through everything, yeah. finding what's going on. MIT is coming here as well. Yeah. 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 And they will have a workshop during the first week. And that workshop will be done kind of outside in the city. I don't know if you know Musikhjälpen. You, kind of, you can be a part of or watch uh, when they're working together. So, okay, yeah. so that was MIT. That yeah, was coming. MIT. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Good. Okay. So we're going to hand over to Mikhail now, who's going to be speaking to us about volunteering. Um, Mikhail and I already know each other. We've known each other a few years, and actually, he uh, was one of our podcast interviewees. So one of our episodes is all about volunteering in Helsingborg, and he's. Uh, that, that was a good episode. I remember we, we got through a lot of information there. Yeah, so, good. yeah, it was really nice. And um, and now you're able to talk us all about volunteering, not just in Helsingborg, but also for age 22. So I think that's going to be, be good. Okay, Great. I'll pass over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, great. Good to be here. Uh, it's been a while since I've been talking in, in front of live people. Uh, in, <laughs> like you have 3D shapes. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's really nice. I had earlier this, this lunch, I had a presentation as well. So this, this is my second this time today uh, for almost two years. So it's, uh, it's great yeah. Yeah, to be back here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I will, would like to, to start to ask you a question. Uh, so if, raise your hand if you have ever done voluntary work. Almost everyone, great. And uh, you raise your hand if you are part of or a member of uh, a non-profit association uh, in Sweden, Förening. 
No? One or two, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Uh, when I say non, a non-profit uh, association, do you know what I mean when I say that? Is, this, is that the right word to say when I speak about uh, those? Because uh, yeah, it's hard to find the perfect word for... for yeah, Red Cross. Like the Red Cross, yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so we use that word uh, in this context, so, so we all know what we're talking about, so right. Uh, so my name is Mikael and I, I work at uh, Helsingborg Stad uh, in contact center. So when you, when you have an errand for the city when you call, you, you get to contact center. Uh, they're, they're the best, they can fix almost everything you have uh, as a citizen here in Helsingborg. I'm a part of, of that a group uh, and I focus on the, the volunteering work and we also have associations with the, the non-profit uh, associations. We work together with them. And today I will talk uh, a little bit about uh, uh, the engagement, can you say that as well? Yeah, the, the, uh, the, in general in Sweden, just a little glimpse of how it, how it looks. Uh, and then I will tell you a little bit about volunteering uh, at age 22. All right? Great. So this is first uh, uh, a number here, 51%. Do you have any idea what, what, what that means? In volunteering, yeah. You can say that it's, uh, you can say that, that it's um, the share of people of the Swedish population that does uh, some sort of voluntary work. No. Uh. Uh, yeah, so it's 51 percent. It's quite quite many in Sweden that does some some sort of uh, voluntary work. This does not include uh, uh, giving money or or uh, giving um, uh, clothes or products or stuff like that, and it's not included in like when you do informal helping, like when you help a neighbor or or, or a friend uh, with doing something. You you drive. Uh, someone to the, to the doctor like that. That is not included in this number. It's uh, outside of this. But otherwise, with the non-profit associations, it's 51% of the Swedish population, the, the, the share of them. So it's quite big. And 18 hours. What do you think that is? Exactly. You, you, you read the... I was there at the presentation. You were there? No, oh. <laughs> so it's 18 hours a month that, that you put on uh, voluntary working. That's also quite a lot. What do you think about this? No, but it's... It's a uh, membership from uh, in uh, non-profit associations. In general, we are member of three different. The Swedish are member of three different uh, three uh, yeah, uh, memberships. It could be uh, where you live. You have the the uh, like communities uh, for 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 villas or. Uh, in apartment building, uh, you have that. Kind of, that is also a non-profit association. Many people don't know that they are a part or member of that when they live in uh, apartment. So, so that's also quite a lot. And this number is the the amount of non-profit uh, associations in Sweden, about two hundred forty thousands. So this gives you a little bit a picture of the Swedish engagement, right? And this is the model uh, in Sweden. I, you have a lot of experience, experiences from, from your different countries, uh, where you've been, where you lived. Uh, probably it looks uh, quite different uh, comparing to Sweden. And I... I I come from, from the apartment, we call it Engagemang, Helsingborg. And we work with uh, coordinating voluntary assignments. Um, from, from the beginning, it was 
uh, center to to um, just to the uh, to the cities uh, um, to the cities departments. But just in a few years, we're looking more and more to uh, reach uh, and focus on the inhabitants here in 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 Helsingborg, the people, uh, their engagement. How could we? Um, how could we catch, uh, how could we embrace that engagement and pass it on to uh, whatever needs there are? Are there needs in the, in the city departments, uh, in like social, uh, social assignments, um, helping kids with homeworks? Uh, if you want to, to learn how to speak languages, uh, Swedish is the most, uh, you can volunteer their help. Uh, we also have a language uh, where you can learn how to speak um, uh, Arabic. Uh, it starts that, so if you like to speak that. So uh, that is one. Or if you uh, are more interested in uh, getting involved with, with some sort of non-profit associations, we can also help you with uh, guiding you to, to the right uh, association. So, uh, so that's what we do. Uh, we also have a uh, contact with uh, associations uh, throughout um, a local agreement that the city of Helsingborg and uh, non-profit uh, associations here in Helsingborg has signed. So it's a statement that we want to work together for better, um, uh, uh, better terms uh, for working together in the, f in the future. And that we work as well. And now the City Expo. Now you all you already know all about it, uh, thanks to presentation earlier. Yeah, perfect. So I will just skip. I will skip. <laughs> uh, but here, the, the main areas we talked about this uh, earlier. So uh, when you're we talk about volunteering or uh, um, helping out doing work uh, at, at the City Expo. Uh, we also use the, the different kinds of areas, and there are two, two, major, two major types of um, um, types of work that you can do. Uh, either you're a volunteer, or we use uh, uh, people who work in the city as well. So, uh, and when you work at the City Expo, you're a host. Either you're uh, employed by the city, or you're a volunteer. So. All together, we are hosts at the City Expo. And we're aiming for the world-class world hosting then. So, uh, just uh, to take uh, um, action to, to all, all, all of the, the other stuff that happens at the City Expo, the hosting as well is going to be world-class. And we have three, uh, like you say, areas or types of, of hosting that, that you can do. The information host, the program host, or the area host. And for the information host, you're uh, centered by, by the, the information centers, the information hubs. Uh, you, you man those uh, together with uh, people from, from, uh, from the city as well. Uh, and you're there by um, talking to people, uh, asking for questions, helping them, guiding them. Uh, and as you know already, we're looking for an international audience, so uh, different kind of language skills uh, are very good. Uh, we say that either you can speak uh, Swedish or English, that's two of the, the base uh, languages. If you can speak those, it's, uh, it's perfect. So you don't, you don't have to speak Swedish, you can also just speak English, because uh, the visitor speaks English as well. And you're not working alone, you're always working together with someone else, either a volunteer or someone from the city. So this is also like a great uh, moment to get to know people from the city. It could be var variants, different kinds of uh, um, how do you say, titles, uh, um, yeah, bosses or, or yeah, wh whoever works uh, together as a host. So that's the information host, and it's 
these information hosts uh, are all over the four, four different areas. And then we also have the program host, which is more connected to different kinds of programs during the, the City Expo, also, during, uh, also uh, on the main, four main areas. And uh, there you can, you help, um, could be like backstage uh, uh, if there's a concert or uh, uh, an event that happens. You, 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 this could be like more practical, hands-on uh, helping uh, business uh, at the program host. And then we have the area host, and it's uh, similar to the information host, but here you, you, you're more mobile, uh, you walk around the, the different kinds of areas, and you also are, um, represent safety for, for the people who visit. Uh, you show if you are uh, working as a host at the age 22, so you're always available and you're creating an good uh, environment for all the visitors. And when you volunteer, uh, all volunteers that we do, you don't get any paid. Uh, it's obvious. Uh, but uh, what you get is you get an education. Every uh, person that works as a host and gets educated uh, and gets a, a good information about the, the, the City Expo and what uh, you, you accept to do and talk about. So you'll be safe in the, in the role as a, as a host. And as I said, you get an opportunity to expand your network, meeting with other people uh, in the city, other volunteers, meeting uh, very different kinds of people uh, visiting, the, visiting the, the City Expo. Uh, and you also get an access behind the scenes uh, when you're working. That's, that's always uh, a good experience to, to see something that others uh, don't ha have access to. So that's great as well. So, uh, there's no time to wait, just sign up and uh, I or my, one of my colleagues will get back to you. There is uh, a, a form in English where you sign up, uh, you get an email and uh, we'll get back to you uh, once later on. So Miguel, how about, um, um, I think there are different shifts that people can work, aren't there? Different yeah. times and do you like people to sign up for maybe a, a minimum number of days or, or how does that work? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we have, um, we say that the minimum could be four shifts, working mm -hmm. shifts, uh, to do to do the the, the, the present uh, to do to volunteer. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are uh, morning shifts uh, and afternoon evening shifts, uh, Monday to Friday, uh, and then on the weekends it's a little bit uh, later. But it's not it's not late shifts. Uh, I think it's. Uh, um, seven thirty ish. Uh, mm. So it's not it's not until two or three in the morning. So so we'll do it in in uh, daytime or evening time. And you're welcome to sign up as as many shifts as you want. Uh, we have no limitation on the on the upper end, but we prefer that you do uh, at, at least four shifts. Uh, but we're yes, we're open for for everyone. Yes. <laughs> Do you collect if they have any like special interests or special skills besides language? Uh, uh, if they have a special interest or know many things about the ocean, for example, yeah. maybe Harbor Cape is a good place to yeah. be a volunteer. Exactly. Yeah. So you can also you, in the form you can write uh, something that, that 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 we could know a little bit m more about you to help us to to make you. Uh, a good schedule and, and to the benefit your your skills. And I think in the form there's also if you know somebody working in the city and you know Exactly, yeah. Mm, yeah. Exactly. 
that. So you can write their name if you know someone who works at the municipality, municipal city. Uh, we'll try to, to connect you so that you can work together. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No other questions? Right. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Really good. Yeah. Great information. Thanks so much. Good. How are we doing for time? Oh, golly, it's bang on seven o'clock. That's pretty good. Um, okay. That means then, Jonas, it's time for you. Yeah. Yes. Would you like me to bring up the presentation on my computer? Yes. Please. I will do that then. Yeah. Would you like the microphone in the meantime? Yes. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jonas and it's very good to be here. Uh, and this is Peo Nilsson. Give him a hand for coming. <laughs> for, for coming all the way from Dunkos Kulturhus. <laughs> two, two minutes away. So, so. Uh, we had a request for music, so now is the music time. And my, my, my friends and family are teasing me uh, for saying that choirs are the solution for every problem or every challenge. And that might not be the case, but I do believe that, that we don't understand the full potential of choirs. Uh, so, so that's why I was so happy when we could apply for a grant from Visionsfonden forming this, this Helsingborgs Världskör. And I'm so happy that we are here tonight. Yes, some music. And we, so I want us to sing something together. Um, okay. Few experiences. Can I start? Yeah, I'm just about to finish the presentation. Do that. Uh, few experiences can measure up to the feeling of unity and closeness in a common song. Choral singing is a meeting place with unique ability to tear down walls and build bridges. In the choir, you are both the sender and the receiver. Participation is central and everyone has something to give. Uh, yes, here is me and Emma. Uh, and, and so I want us to sing a song. And I know that some of us likes to sing. Good for you. Some of us don't. You would rather go to the dentist. So, so then think of it as a dentist. You know, in one hour it will be over and the pain is gone. Okay, so, so, so can you please stand up? Everybody. Sorry. <laughs> so, so I think that, do you, uh, sorry, you can see it again. I was a little bit, <laughs> it, it was just an exercise. You can see it again. So, so do you need, do you know what you need to create a choir or to sing a chord? Good voice. Wrong. No, you don't have to have a good voice. But what, I mean, I think that everyone is welcome. But what do you need to create a choir or to sing a chord? People. Yes. And, and how many? Two. 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 Exactly. Exactly. That is one thing you can't do by yourself. You have to be at least two people. And that is one thing that is so important to me that this is something that we do together. So that is really a key word, doing things together. And to me, it's been so obvious during the pandemic that we're all in the same boat because the virus doesn't stop with borders. As they say, you know, we are not safe. No one is safe until everyone is safe. And I think that goes, brings people together. And another key word, in music, and if you don't like choirs, don't focus in that I'm saying choirs, but I think we can all experience and learn things from the choir experience in our regular life. And I think another word is trust. I didn't bring my choir, One Nation, that would be very nice for me to have them, but I trust you, so it's only us tonight. And, and, and singing in a choir is really trust in real time. As a conductor, I stand here with literally empty hands. I don't even touch you, but I trust you to express what I want to express. And you trust me to lead you, and you trust your neighbors 
to sing at the same time as you, so you are not the only one shouting out. Okay, so before we, be, be, before we stand up, I will just see if you are alert, so we can have a little try. Can you do like this, everybody? And, and, and when I say now, you clap your hands. And nobody clap your hands before I say that word. Okay, you promise? Okay. Now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Da -da. Okay. So, so, so now, now you can stand up. Uh, and uh, and uh, if we have a very simple song, it's just now. Nah. Can you say now? Nah. Say now. Nah. Nah. Yeah, and it's na 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 okay 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 good but we can do better you know and 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 we have no visitors here we're only live on facebook so we don't bother you know but 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 you know i've been i've been a choir director for quite some time so i know that you have to open your mouth to sing so even if you don't want to sing, stand with your mouth open, so we believe that you're a part. One, two, three, and na, 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 or even traumatizing to sing, and maybe it is because we expose one of our most personal thing, our voice. And you do have ears. That's and, the <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's too close to your mouth, you, you, you know, you know. But, it, but it's so sad, you know, I had, I had a concert the other day, and it was this man, he was 95 years old. And he came up to me and said, oh, very good concert. And you had me singing. My wife is dead now. But if you heard me singing, she would, you know, she wouldn't believe it and she would laugh, you know. And so it took 95 years until someone told him, you are welcome to join the choir. And to me, it's so important. It's not about singing the best. And sometimes me and Emma, we do like, this is from, from Malmö Live where we gathered 1,100 singers in it, uh, at the Gospel Fest. And people say, so you're really welcoming everyone? Yes, we do, because there are always many people that can sing. So it just adds a nice flavor if someone is not that used to sing. So once again, there is nothing dangerous. One, two, three, and na, 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 na. Na 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 na, good. Na 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 na, one more time. Na na, yeah. Um. Na 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 na, na 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 na, na 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 na. Very good. You, you know the picture saying this is your comfort zone, and this is where the magic happens. You know. So what we're doing here tonight is kind of expanding our comfort zones a little bit. So can we rock at the same time as well? You move, you move your feet like one, two, three, and four. Bam, together. Yeah, very good. We sing at the same time. Yeah, 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 that's good, good, good. And the, the normal, normally you're not too late. You have the time to stop here, so it's like, oh, I'm going to be late, I'm going to be late to you. <laughs> doom, stop, to doom, stop, to doom, stop, to doom, doom, dam, to doom, stop. Mm -hmm. And we can sing to get to one on oh, na, 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 can we clap too like this, na, na, mm. Na 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 Can we take it up like this? Na na yeah. Na 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 One last time. Na na yeah. Na 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 yeah. Na 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 na. Na 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 
Na, yeah, very good. <laughs> Please have a seat. So that was the first song, and and um, very good. Um, I just want to. I mean, you can go to the website and and read everything about the choir, but I just want to to take it very briefly. Everyone is welcome, everyone. Um, advanced, beginners, choirs, individuals, or associations. I mean, if you, if you have a group, whatever kind of group, bring them, have something to eat, and then come to the choir. We will we'll be rehearsing four times at three different locations to make it easy for people to, to come to the choir. So on, on Tuesdays, we will be in Drottninghög, Dalhem. Wednesdays, we will be på Söder. And Thursdays, we will be on Planteringen. So you choose one place, and you choose one, one weekday that works for you. And you go there every time. Hopefully, we will be so many, so, you, so it will be a little bit unpersonal with everyone together. So we will form like smaller choirs, and we will sing in different languages and everything. Follow us on Helsingborg's Vardskor, it means Helsingborg World Choir. All these places, we have one bus line called the Line 1, that's connecting the whole city from Dalhem through the city down to Rå. So May the 31st, we will have a concert, folk festival, in these three different loca locations. And we call that One CD Line 1. So we will have two concerts at uh, Drottninghög, two at South, på Söder, and two at Planteringen. So it's, if you want to experience more of these concerts, it's the audience that has to travel along the Line 1. So that's why Skåne Trafiken also is one of the partners. Because they also have a slogan that says Tillsammans. Because choirs and Åka Kollektivt. What's Kollektivt? Yeah. Public yeah, public transport, yes. That's something you have to do together. Then we will end this project with a big joint concert in the heart of Helsingborg on uh, Saturday, June the 4th at 4 o'clock either at Knutpunkten or outside uh, CU. So we are, are finding the final. Yes. Um, since, since it's called H22, we are aiming for 22 different languages. And we think that that's not a problem. Here it's actually 33 because it looks better with a little bit more. So, so b because, because it's, um, and I mean, I don't know all the languages. So if you have find a mistake on some misspelling, let me know afterwards so we can change it. Um, and I do believe that that language is a key word also. Actually, I have a song called Mitt Språk which means my language, but it's not translated yet because I didn't have the time, so we're not going to sing that today. But music is a universal language, a meeting place, or you can actually call it like keys if you have a common room where we can meet. The music can be like different keys. We might enter the room from different doors. But the thing is that we're coming together, meeting and doing something together. Um, so I'm thinking we're going to sing another song that's just called Tillsammans. Som jag får efter det på sig. And it's called Together. So it's Together, You and Me. Can you repeat? Together, you and me. Yeah, Together here today. Together, uh, together what an evening this could be. And that's kind of also uh, a way that I look at music. It's not me and Peo doing things for you and you just receiving. We're doing this together. That's why the last sentence is, together, what an evening this could be. It won't be great unless we do it together. 
Så vi ser för en betes där det är en, två, tre. Together, you and me. Together, here today. Together, what an evening this could be. Listen one more time. One, two, three. Together, you and me. Together, here today. Together, what an evening this could be. Proceed, proceed. And if you don't sing better than this, you have to stand up again. But you can sit, but not no crossed legs. You know, a little bit focused, please. Unless it's gonna, gonna be a late evening. So one more time. Together, you and me. Together. Here today, together, what an evening this could be. That's very good. And it's a little bit faster, last one. One more time, two, three. Together, you and me, together. Here today, together, what an evening this could be. Yeah, that's very good. And this first word is together. Can someone tell me the word together in another language? Sorry? Yeah, okay, tillsammans. Okay, okay. We talk tillsammans på svenska. One, two, three. Tillsammans, you and me. Tillsammans, here today. Tillsammans, what an evening this could be. Okay, another language. Kalisi. Kalisi. Can we say that? One, two, three. Kalisi. You and me. Kalisi. Here today. Kalisi. What an evening this could be. Okay. One last. Sorry. Mester. Vi mester. Vi mester. Vi mäste. Det blir vem vem mäste blir det? Är okej? One two three. Vi mäste. You and me. Vi mäste. Here today. Vi mäste. What an evening this could be. Together. Together. Ah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so I just want to say one last thing before I go. Um, age 22, I'm <laughs> pointing at you, <laughs> is a step toward vision 2035, which is to create a more creative, vibrant, common, global and balanced city. And I would say that we touched most of the words already. But I would just stay one minute to a balanced life. Because I think that goes both for covers physical and mental health. And, and, and me and Emma is also involved in a project called Break the Silence. About the importance of music for young people's mental health. And I don't know, have, have you heard of the, the concept sense of coher coherence. Mm -hmm. Me neither, <laughs> for a few months ago. But if you're working with that, it's, it's, it's a guy, a scientist, a researcher called Aaron Antonovsky in the 70s was focusing on what's keeping us healthy instead of what's making us sick. And, and he was finding out that People that had resilience when bad stuff happened to them was people that had a sense of coherence. They felt that they were a part of something bigger than themselves. They know their role in this context and they was giving the tools to handle their parts. And I think that that a choir is really a good example you are a part of something bigger. You know that you are an alto or an tenor and the choir director helps you to handle what you're supposed to do. And he means that that, that is a very strong 
in, in Sweden, it's, it's more fun in Swedish because it's not a risk factor, but in Sweden it's a frisk factor. So it rhymes in Sweden kind of, but not so much in, not so much in English, you know. So it's, it's, it's a health factor, you know. And, and choir might not be your health factor, but I would challenge you to find that place that makes you joy, you know. And for those of you that has choir as a health factor, you are more than welcome to Helsingborg's Världskör. That was it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, ah, have, do we have two more minutes? Yeah, yeah thank you. So we, 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 t we take, have, have you heard the song You Got a Friend? Yeah. So if if we talk best, but say we, we can just take a refrain. Oh, you just call out my name, and you know wherever I am, I come running to see you, to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or winter, spring, summer, or fall. All you have to do, all you have to do is call, and I be, and I be there. Yes, I will. You got a friend. You got a friend. Okay, that was a lot of lyrics. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But now we have to take the last part. It's just you got a friend. Can you say that? Ja, bra. Så om vi får F1 då. Mm, mm. Nej, nej, jag menar tonen. Mm. You got a friend. Can you sing that now? Mm, mm. You got a friend. One more time, you got. You got a friend. One more time, you got. That's very good. Okay, okay, that's very good. So now we're gonna take it in harmony as well. So all the ladies sings that part one more time. And now, mm -mm. you got a friend. One more time, you got, you got a killer. Show best killer. Show best killer. Lady, you got a friend. All the men, you got a friend. You got a friend. All the men, one more time. Yeah. Mm. Very good, continue all the men you got. You got a friend and all the ladies got mm -mm. you got a friend one more time. Mm -mm. You got a friend one last time you got a you got a friend same notes follow me got a friend got a one more time FL what up Ghana, Ghana, okay, Ghana, God, 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 friend, friend, yeah, what a choir! <laughs> I'm done. Yes. Yes, sure. Thank, Thank you, you, Jonas. That was the first time we've ever had singing at a HIC event. Time, yeah, yeah a po a, a po <laughs> apart from maybe some pub nights, but I'm not sure about that yet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much to all of our guest speakers, to Caroline, to Mikhail, to Jonas, to Peor. It's It's been a pleasure to have you all here. Uh, great to hear so much more about H22, to find out more about what's happening in the city. And we had the bonus of the sing-along, so what, what could be better? Um, thank you to to our volunteers this evening. We've had Graham videoing for us. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> we have had uh, Leo and Punit both helping us with, with the food and letting you in downstairs as well when you came in. So thank you very much to all of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Great. So I should have thought this through a bit. I'm just trying to think what our next HIC event is. We've got week eight next week, so nothing's happening then. But then on the 3rd of March, we have an event called Inside and Out, a little bit different to this evening. It's um, two teachers who I know 
from the International School of Helsingborg. Uh, they're both fantastic learning support teachers. They're lovely young women I've known for a long time. And they've started up their own company running workshops for children between the ages of five and nine. And it's all about understanding their social and emotional intelligence and social emotional needs so it's going to be very interesting as a parent who's got older children i'm a little bit past that stage now but i think for anyone with with small children even thinking about having children it's going to be well worth coming and finding out some more uh, we've then got on the 5th of march we have a saturday afternoon walk where we're meeting at the library and then we'll just sort of go up to shen and come down it'll just be a nice stroll and probably a cup of coffee at the end but please check out our website we've got lots of things going on on the 16th of march will be back here because we're going to start up our volunteering group that we had a few years ago um, pre-pandemic if we remember back in those days we had a nice group of people who came and brainstormed one evening we had some great ideas it helped us plan because we then get a better sense of what people want you know it's easy enough to sit there and think up ideas but it's better if we have some input and find out what people are most interested in doing and there are so many skills out there and so many people who might want to do something we've heard about the importance of volunteering and what we can get out of volunteering already and we're giving something back into the community so be very uh, happy if you'd like to sign up and come along on that evening as well but yeah there's lots more you can as i say earlier you can follow us on facebook you can find us on linkedin you can find us on instagram and you can find our website so thank you very much i hope i've remembered everything um did i have a question maybe there no okay any other questions no no okay all right thank you very much please stay on and help us eat some more food and have some tea some coffee and a mingle we'll aim to leave around eight i think the alarm's going to start going at eight so we'll have to uh, <laughs> sort that out but we, we we think we've got the hang of it now yeah okay thank you very much thank you. bye thank you.